Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now, um, today I'm going over my complete Paul McCartney collection. Now, this is something i done, I think it was my first video here, but I've got, um, got loads more stuff since then, so I just thought I'd do like an updated version of, of my first video. So, um, so basically, in this video I will show all of my Paul McCartney 12-inch um, vinyls, 7-inch vinyls, CDs and the few DVDs I've got. So basically just everything I own off Paul McCartney. Um, yeah, yeah. so I'll begin with my 12-inch um, um, vinyls. So I won't talk about the albums, I might just say where I bought them and maybe how much I paid if I remember. So first one here is McCartney, his debut album here. Um, this came in a job lot on eBay. So, um, original first press, um, um, first press British as well. And then we have Ram here. Now I found this in a charity shop actually. It, um, 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 like in Stockbridge, I found it. Um, um, wasn't expecting to find it at all really, but I just picked it up and paid seventeen pounds for for this. Maybe I got overpaid, but the condition is absolutely fantastic. It is. It's brilliant condition so so really shiny as well so um so i'm happy with this one here i mean it's an essential ad really to have in in like anyone's collection ram really so um so yeah i've got that one there and then on to wildlife now this one i got in a, a manchester record shop here i believe it's all original um um, the only thing was though, um, um, well, I didn't notice that when I bought it, but there's a few rips on the cover and that up there. But like, to be honest, they kind of blend in like with like the cover, which is kind of like a brown and greedy kind of colour. Like, and like, you don't notice them that much, really. Well, I didn't like when I bought it. Like, actually, I only noticed that when I got back. I paid eight pounds for this, which maybe a bit like too much, I'd say, but. But I mean, it's all original, like original sleeve and and the label with both Paul and Linda's face on it. Now I've got um, two copies of this next time here. Um, I'll show this one first. Uh, this this Vedra Speedway here. This is the first copy I got, and I think I was kind of a bit ripped off with this one there. Like it, it um, and like I got this like when I first got into um, re um, record collecting. So um, so yeah, I paid twenty pounds for this, which was um, way too much, I think. Um, the condition's not that great, the spine is very much non-existent, if like, you ask me. Um, the book's in it, but it's not stapled, and the vinyl skips a lot. So this one here is one that I may get rid of, but but I think with this one is, it's a first presence, it has the Wings lo um, logo on, on, on the record label. Whereas I've got this one here of eBay, here, another copy of Red Bull Speedway, with um, which is in fabulous condition. Really, it's it's as good as you can get really with um, with this album. Here. Booklet staples, or original um, late um, um, sleeve and everything. But but the thing um, is though, it, it's missing the Wings logo, so it must be like a later pressing. But but really, I'm not too fussed because it plays absolutely brilliantly, and yeah. So, so, yeah, I quite like the Red Rose Speedy album. I've always, I've always quite liked it. So, and then we have um, Band on the Run here, a classic album, really. I got this at a record fair. I paid fifteen pounds for it, which maybe was overpaid a bit, but it's got the poster in it. Um, the only slight thing with this one is though, um, the sleeve here. There's a, um, they've taped it up there, but they've used. It's quite bad on this side here, they've used quite bad quality tape and it's... I don't know really, but... Yes, yeah, so that's the only like issue with this one here, but apart from that, that the um, um, the conditions um, are pretty darn good on it, so... Stand on the run there. But, but, but these are all British ones, unless I uh, say otherwise, so basically. So then we have uh, this one here, Venus and Mars. Now this was the first vinyl I got when I started getting into vinyl collecting. And um, there was a sticker here though, like originally though, which I tried to peel off carefully, but it didn't go quite well. Um, and and like, yeah, same with that there, there's a sticker there. Like, it wasn't like a hype sticker like or anything. And, and, and by, like, by, like, it was either one like this like little record store had put on, or, or, or the previous owner maybe put on it, but 
but um, um, yeah, but just there, though, like try to peel it off, and it didn't go too well. Because this one here I, I, actually is all stamped with Radio Player Music Library, so I'm thinking that they maybe like had a sticker like as a sorting kind of thing if I wanted to play a song with it or something. But I'm not too sure anyway. Because I've got, because about a week later after purchasing that one, I found this one here when I saw he's kind of getting like heavily into vinyls and that. I purchased this one here for £10, which I think was a pretty good price because it's got the two posters, the two stickers, the record's in brilliant condition and, and yeah, it's, it's great. So, um, so that's that one there. Um, this, um, v, um, Venus and Mars and this other album here, this next one here, these have, have recently been reissued with that, but I don't think that I'll be getting the vinyls to them, like, anytime soon. Um, yeah, but might do one day, but I'm not planning on getting them. So here we have Wings of Speed of Sound. This one here is interesting, though, because I, um, um, and, and, and uh, like we already purchased the the Traveling Wilburys CD, like at like this and um, and um, like an HMV and that. So I spent because I took fifteen pounds of me, that was thirteen, right? So I had two pounds left, and like and like we were going to go to this restaurant, right? But there was about a forty-five minute wait, so I knew that and 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 right, so I knew that there was this other record store um, store down the road. So I uh, went in, not expected to pick up anything. Found this for two pounds. So I picked it up, and um, the condition, like on, on um, um, right, like condition, sleeve-wise, is pretty good. But it's just like the record, though, it skips on "She's My Baby," which actually is like one of my favourite songs, like on this album. So I was a bit annoyed at that, but um, yeah. Apart from that, yeah, what can you do? It, it, the record looks really nice, so and that's the thing. Now on to um, the first vinyl I ever kind of bought it was this one here wings at speed of um, um, no wings over america this one is and um i got this before i got into record collecting and that and that like i like the beatles and that but um um yeah i just got this at a record fair which didn't know what um was happening it was at this place called new ladder kind of it's like a heritage center kind of visitor attraction thing and um, next door there's a record fair so i went in rather with like my dad and that and we found this one here for eight pounds, so like, I just picked it up because, um, rather probably just because it had like the most stuff in it, really triple, triple vinyl set. The poster, which is on my wall, there, you fully see it in like in like some of the other videos. Um, condition it is a bit um, kind of there, like at like the edge, it's a bit wearing a little bit. But I'm not sure if that was the way it came or the way I maybe, um, 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 maybe like um. Maybe I like, mistreated it like a bit. Like I don't really know, but like, but I was quite young when I got this one, so I probably didn't know too much what I was doing with it. And then we have uh, London Town here, and this one here, yeah, this is the first copy I've got of it, and this is a Italian copy, I believe. Yes, it is Italian, and I and I got this at the same time as that Venus and Mars one. Got them both for two pounds, um, um, I got them both for a fiver, so two pound fifty each, really, which is probably about really bit more than like what they're worth really and yeah sleeve here but no poster unfortunately and also there's a big sticker mark there as well I just tried to peel it off and it didn't go well either so that's my first copy of London Town I got second one here is um, in, mu in much better shape um, it's got the poster it's original British and and yeah it's, it's pretty good there so that's London Town I think I paid five pounds for that one or was it yeah, about four or five pounds for that copy off London Town. Then we have Wing, Wings Greatest now here. Now I've got two copies of this one here. This one here was my granddad's um, um, copy off the album. And it's in pretty good shape as well, I must say. Uh, um, 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 uh, this had the poster with it as well. And then I also got this one here. This was um, this was in the eBay job lot, what I was talking about. And... and and yeah, like really, um, 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 well, I mostly just like bought this for like, the other records what came like in like the job look really because this is missing the poster, but I think it's a later issue though, um, 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 well, like maybe like an early one because like because the spine's much thinner really, so I'm not sure like if this one maybe didn't come with the poster originally, but but yeah, it just feels like different packaging like all together really. It seems more glossy than the other one. Then we have uh, back to the egg here. Really underrated album, in my opinion. Um, got this at the same time as I got that Red Red Speed, and um, that Red Red Speedway kind of from like the same 
and and right, it's this place in Manchester called Affleck's Palace, kind of weird, emo -y stuff because like the sisters into all that stuff. But like, I just like, went in like rather reluctantly. We took the corner. First thing there was was a record kind of seller that so I um 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 just kind of stayed there really. But I found like that Red Red Speed here, but also found this so they paid eight pounds for this, which was. Um, quite reasonable I'd say the only thing is it in and 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 like it jumps a bit though on arrow through me which is quite annoying so I'm, I'm I'll maybe get a replacement of this album sometime soon then we have um McCartney 2 here I paid six pounds for this and this is a um pollen pressing I think it is yeah printed in hot um, um printed in Holland there it says at the bottom and yeah, the packaging is a bit flimsy here, really. I mean, um, I mean, I mean, I didn't know that it was Dutch before I kind of picked it up, but it'll do for now. I mean, I mean, it plays um, well, and it's got the original sleeve and everything, so I'm happy with that one. Then got two copies of this next one here, Tug of War. Both came in the job lot. This one here, um, um, it's not in great condition because of like because of like the mark there. I think like the seller had wrapped them in kind of shopping bag, like plastic, like Tesco bags. And like I think a bit like the die went onto the back of the records of that. So this one isn't that great, but luckily I have another one here. What like I've got a, like the exact same tie, which is in much better shape. Now yeah, they both play um, play really well. So I might get rid of the other one, maybe a possible contest prize or VCLT or something. I'm not too sure what I'll do with it, but that one there's pretty good. Then we have uh, what's this one here, Pipes of Peace here. This one I got the same time as as I got Band on the Run from, and I paid eight pounds for this, which was maybe overpaying a tad, I must admit. Um, but but yeah, I mean, that's out there. I've not I've not I've not really got too much to say about Pipes of Peace. It's an okay album, but definitely not one of his best. Then we have uh, Give My Regards to Broad Street here, and I got this in Air, which is kind of on like the west coast of Scotland, kind of like a seaside town thing here for five pounds it's actually the record shop there is like in like the post office actually because like, you go in they've got the post office at the back the rec and, and this record store like at the front but like the only thing was so um um after like i bought it and that like and like um and like and like i was in like this coffee shop like with my dad opened it up to find a huge kind of tear in it there i was quite disappointed in it really but yeah <laughs> Yeah, like not so bad there because I've tried to kind of like get all off there, but this idea is just completely ripped. So, um, um, if I see one cheap enough, I like um, right, I may buy another copy. But I, I rarely listen to this album, like if ever, really. I mean, it's 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 not very good at all. I mean, he, he like he murders some Beatles classics, but it does have no more lonely nights for it though, which is a um, virtue of this album, I'd say. We've then got um, my only 12-inch single by Paul, um, No More Lonely Nights. Got this at a record fair quite recently, actually. Well, well, in August, actually. But this one is pretty good, though. I mean, I mean, like, I'd like to get a few more 12-inch records on Paul. Well, 12-inch singles, I mean. Then we have uh, Press to Play here. I'm quite fond of this album. Got a bit of a soft spot for it, but... Yeah, that's about there. Not much on the back. I paid three pounds for this. This is pretty, pretty good value for this one. Here. You know, the, the the only thing is though, it does have a bit of like a mark on like the back there because when I bought it and that, they had like another copy in that, but like they go back to like fetch another one. But like the one they fetched, like had like, its mark on it, which I didn't notice when like and like and like and like when like I first picked it up, but I noticed it later and I was a bit disappointed. But I mean, it's just it's just really filler in in like the collection really yeah but I do like the album though I mean but but it's not one of his best I mean then got uh, um, all the best here this came in that job lot as well which we and um, 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 which when I get to like the last item in it about like I'll tell you how much it um, 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 like it all came to so um right it's this one here yeah like all the best double vinyl set very much captures his best work really on this one. You've got Band of the Rug coming up, um, No More Lonely Nights, uh, Live and Let Die, Maybe I'm Amazed. Yes, yeah, like all, um, 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 there's like all of like his big tracks in it though. So this is a pretty good one to have, really like essential for anyone really. 
We then have uh, this copy here of the Rush Dam here. So I'm not sure how rare this one is. I think I think like I was speaking to Rock Boy on Skype and he said that this was made like a V press and like off it. Um, 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 and because it's not on like the original label, because I think the original one had a kind of city background on like the back there. But this one here though, like in like in like the in, in, like the interesting one is there's two extra tracks like on like the vinyl which aren't listed on on the sleeve. So like um right like, yeah, because I think the album was originally pressed um and with only how many tracks on it? One, two, three, four, five, six. With only six tracks on like each side, but for later ones they put seven on it. So my one seems to be a don't know about like a kind of like transition one where like they hadn't like updated the sleeve, but they had the record though, or like maybe just someone's like, like chopped and changed the ones about a bit. No idea what's that doing there, but anyway, we have flowers in the dirt now. Another decent album. I quite like this album actually. And, and this one also came in the job lot. So basically, the album's McCartney, um, and, and, and McCartney, that good copy of Red Rose Speedway, Wings Greatest, Tug of War, All the Best, and this album here, the two copies of Tug of War actually, all came to £15 on eBay. So that was pretty good. It works out about £3 per album, which is a, um, 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 which is very reasonable because if you paid about at least a fiver for each of them like at like record fairs most definitely more but flies in the dirt uh, this one is complete i mean you've got like the insert the original sleeve and everything so that one there's complete really and now this is where mccartney's albums become very difficult to get like i've not got like any off the ones um and um, 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 well i've got none of his 90s albums and i've only got one of his albums from the 2000s from the noughties um, and it's this I'm here, Electric Arguments, which is becoming quite rare to get now. Well, like I did get this off Amazon when it was my birthday. So, um, yeah, um, um, yeah, so this one here is pretty cool to have. It's probably the, the rarest one I, I have in my collection, but it's not that rare, I mean, but it is going up in price now. So, um, so yeah, 200 gram vinyl as well, which is pretty cool. Yeah, and it also comes with the CD. Which kind of right, like and like and like right, made me get like a bit more as well because I like having the CZ so I can put and um, put it on my iPod too. And then and then finally for the 12 inch vinyls we have new here his latest down here. And um, well I just put like the wee download card on that in the front of it there. But new here I've n I've not got kisses on the bottom. Want to get a hold of that one because that's going up in price as well. So um so yeah this one here new brilliant fantastic album really. Yeah, yeah, one of his best, I must say. And like, and like, yeah, they're just like, like so, they're so great and cheerful. The songs, really. I mean, they're just, it's, it's, it's a fantastic album, really. So that's new there. So that is the twelve-inch vinyls done. I think I'm gonna now move on to the the seven-inch singles, and then and then the CDs and then the DVDs for the last. So um, yeah, so seven-inch singles here. This is far from complete. So we have um, an another day back with a woman or why. Can't remember how much paid this. Probably just about two pounds or a pound or something. Then we have Helen Wheels here, back with Country Dreamer, just in this kind of cardboard sleeve here. But I can now kind of like and like and like, like, like refrain from getting like these ones here. Like I'd like them to be well, again like the original sleeve. But this was like one of the first singles I got, so. Mostly just got that because it's not like on like an album, you see. And then um, missing quite a lot of singles now until Mullock and Tyre here. So um, yeah, like double A side actually with Girls School, but um, Mullock and Tyre was most definitely the one what was promoted. So and like and like I think this became the biggest British shelling non charity single. I think yeah. And then we have uh, Good Night Tonight. And Daytime Night and Suffering, a, a fantastic single, which I really want the 12 inch of this one. This is what I'm desperate to get, but I'm yet to see it at any record fair I've been at. I'm not, I'm, may, I'm maybe just not looking for it in like the right place or something, but but it is one that I'm desperate to get a hold of. And then I've um, Old Siam Sir with Spin It On, not in the original sleeve, because the original sleeve was blue and I think it had some text on it, but. 
but still alright to have that one there. We then have Ebony and Ivory here, Plum Courtney and Stevie Wonder. Yeah, like all these ones are probably um, um, like we're dead cheap as well, actually. Oh, no, pop this. And um, we have Take It Away here, Paul McCartney. Um, the B side to this one, though, is um, I'll Give You a Ring, which is a fantastic song, an absolutely brilliant song there from Paul. So there's the back of it there. Um, yeah, like, I paid five pounds for this, maybe a bit much, but the condition of like the sleeve at least is great. The record skips a lot, which I'm um, quite annoyed about, especially considering that I paid a fiver for it. But I mean, what can you do about it? Then we have uh, Tug of War here by Paul McCartney. This one here, I think, is one of his more rarer singles because it didn't do that well commercially, so it is quite hard to get. Like, you don't see it like every day, and like, I got this one for a pound, so I'm very pleased with this one here. Um, Get It is on the B-side as well, the song he did with Carl Perkins. We have this one here, which I'll just show here. Um, technically, it's Michael Jackson, but it's um, Paul McCordy and Michael Jackson, the girl is mine here. Yeah, I just kind of got this for filler in, like, in like, the collection again. No real reason why I got it, but just, just yeah, to have, really, like, in like, the collection. Then I have the other song he did with Michael Jackson, Say, Say, Say. This one is in absolutely horrible condition. I mean, it skips loads of times. Only pays about 50p for it, I think. It's about what it's worth. I mean, it's all it's all ripped. Should really get another copy, but but like you know, I mean, like the song's on Pipes Peace album. That's that's very much like just when I listen to it when it's when it's on the album. Let's say say say, and then we have uh, Pipes of Peace here. Um, yeah, yeah, same on both sides here. Pipes of Peace. Um, good single back was so bad actually. I think I think like in like America. They they flipped it over, so so bad became the A side, which I kind of prefer the song so bad a little bit, but they're both um, um, highlights on the Pipes of Peace album for me. They're like um, um, they're, like, they're like the two best tracks on it for me. We then have um, No More Lonely Nights here with the playout version on the B side. So so yeah, like I um, yes, yeah, so I've got the 12 inch of this one here, what I showed earlier. We then have uh, Paul McCartney and the Frog Chorus, We All Stand Together. Which I actually don't mind the song, I mean, it's it's, it's quite playful, quite childish, and like, I don't mind it, I mean, I mean, yeah. Yeah, like, I can enjoy that song, it's maybe a bit long, but... Yeah, just a bit of fun, really. Then I have Spies Like Us here. Not a big fan of this track, but... I mean, you just get the single A, I mean, probably about... Nah, how much did I pay for this? About... God, I can't remember that. Probably about a pound, if any, yeah. We then have what's this one here, Press, here. Good single here. Yeah, I like, like the cover to it. I like, just sort of showing like, the stereo mix on it there. And the back cover there. Paul going grey a bit before he started dyeing his hair. So, yeah, this is a nice single as well. Like, I do like the song Press. It is from the album Press to Play. So yeah, that's that one there, Press. We have another one here from that same album, Pretty Little Head here. With the B-side, which I really like, called Right Away. Yeah, I think I think, I think think that song's a really nice little song, actually, Right Away. Both songs um, um, co um, um, and that co wrote by Eric Stewart from 10CC, which is another band I really like. And have um, Once Upon a Long Ago here. Once Upon a Long Ago. And there's the B-side there, and um, um, the B-side is Back On My Feet, which I think is a brilliant song, co-wrote by Elvis Costello. So this was kind of like, well, like Paul McCartney like, was coming back after a rather low period, like in like the 80s, in like the mid-80s. We then have uh, My Brave Face here, from the, from the Flowers in the Dirt album, so that's another good single. And um, this one here, which I got quite recently at like my record fair, what went to. Well, not my record fair, the one I go to, I mean. So there's the back of it there. Paid a pound for this, so I'm quite pleased with that. And then um, Hope of Deliverance here. Uh, good single, good song, actually. One of the best of off the ground, actually. So, yeah, that's that one there. And final item here, what I think I can show with with the um, um, with the 7 inch ones, is this one here Dance Tonight, kind of picture disc thing here. It's the only kind of picture disc I've got here. The, the only I issue with this is though, it doesn't play too great. It kind of 
um, it's quite slow and that, uh, and that uh, like it's been like slowed down a lot. Well, it's not like the mix or anything. I think it's just just because right, like the hole's like so tight on like on like the actual whatever you call it. I like no idea what it's called, but you know what I mean. Uh, it's a bit tight, so it doesn't doesn't go around properly. So now I think we'll do DVDs now. Just just so uh, um, I've only got um, four here. Well. Well, this one here, though, is uh, the deluxe edition of Memory Almost Full, which I just like, keep with my DVDs because it's the right size, but there's no DVD in it. Instead, it just kind of all opens up here. You've probably seen it before. Memory, almost, and then full. And then another picture of Paul. And then, and then like, you get the normal album, and then another album with bonus tracks, and a about 20-minute interview with Paul, which is quite interesting to listen to every now and again. So that's quite a cool thing to have. I've probably paid about a fiver for this one here. Yeah, I got it at the same place I got Broad Street from. And then, um, what next will I show? I'll show this one next here. This is a bootleg um, off, off the concert we did in Tokyo in Japan last year. Um, yeah, coming up for like exactly, yeah, like last year actually. Um, yeah, yeah, very good concert, brilliant set list. And, um, and like and I and I and like yeah like really like nicely filmed that because because like, the problem with a lot of McCartney's concert DVDs is like is like you get these um, um, audience shots and that which I'm not a big fan of. I mean like this one here, very little like audience shot, uh, shots. It's all just of Paul like and the band. It's like it's um um, um like it's like professionally filmed at that because it was shown on telly in in um um, um like in Japan and that. And I got and I, and of course like the audio was kind of mixing that by Giles Martin, so it's a really good quality recording, good quality picture. I would recommend trying to get get like that concert from somewhere, but I just like bought it like at a record fair. And then I've put it there. Here, this this um, no idea where I got this actually. I mean, I mean, I'm not sure like I've got like online, but I've had it for like ages. So I mean, um, 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 yeah. So just like the songs. From um, Flowers in the Dirt, and then and then also a few from his Trevor BCCP sessions as well. So this is quite interesting. It's about like an hour long, really. And then something essential, what all McCartney fans must have, the McCartney is. This is an absolutely fantastic collection of all of his music videos. And um, um, well, like on like the first two discs, his music videos. And the third disc isn't as good for me. I mean, I mean, like get kind of um, concert snippets. Of of three live shows, I maybe would have preferred it if it just been kind of at like one concert, and that's maybe like the whole Glastonbury concert, for instance. But like you get about um about twenty minutes off each one, which I'm not a big fan of. I mean, I mean like I would have preferred a full concert. But the other two two discs are absolutely brilliant. I mean, this is essential for any McCartney fan, really. And now on to the CDs here. So. I've um he, yeah I've got quite a few CDs mostly off his later stuff and that but first one we have here is McCartney album here his first one here the archive said he's from 2011 it's just kind of yeah you know the drill here double disc there well I try to get like the extra disc like even like if I don't listen to it that much and then have Ram here Brilliant album again, very much like the vinyl here. Packaging really nice on these ones here with the bonus disc. And also at this point as well, I will show this as well. Won't um, this here, the RAM, the RAM box set. Like, won't unbox it or anything because I've done a video on it already. So you can scroll back. I think it's the second video, possibly. I'd go, I'd go over this. Really awesome one. Probably like his best archive one yet, to be honest with you, that one. And then um, we have this next one here, which is Band on the Run here. Right, yeah, like I've just got like the single disc one here because it was a present. So like, so yeah, whoever bought it must have just got like the wrong, the um, um, the um, um, like the cheapest one there. But I mean, fair enough. I mean, the bonus disc with this one is so uh, off. What I've heard, it's not that great. I mean, it's just kind of demos off the stuff we already have or like live versions. So that's that one there. Now I'm missing. The the Wings Over America one, which I'm wanting to get a hold of, but it's just like um, well, I feel like they botched the packaging up with that one a little bit, and I'm also yet to get the Venus and Mars and Wings at the Speed of Sound ones, 
what came out recently as well. Um, um, yeah, like I'd like to get a hold of those ones. But the next one I have here is London Town. So this is the 1990 um, 3 CD. So these are quite odd to come by as well now, but but really I wouldn't bother paying too much for these now because he's probably going to get ads re-releasing them sometime in like the next five, ten years I reckon. We then have McCartney, McCartney 2 actually, archive CD. So just all them put up there, two CDs in here. Yeah, I didn't like this album on first listen, but it's grown on me a lot recently. So that's that one there. Then we've got Tug of War here. Oh, and, and uh, again, the the white back. This is also being, be, and um, this is going to be the next one in like his archive series. Hope, hope, hopefully coming out. Uh, um, um, and well, I hope it's about June sort of time, but knowing Paul, it'll be about November. Try to cash in like on a Christmas market a bit, I reckon. But but this one's coming next along with Pipes of Peace, so I'm looking forward to that. I'll probably buy the box set because I absolutely love this album. We then have uh, All the Best here, which is again like Greatest Hits um, collection. So yeah, so yeah, like less songs though than the vinyl. But um, but yeah, I feel like they, they picked the right ones for the CD. Now, Flowers of the Dirt here. This one is is the nineteen ninety three one. What adds a couple of bonus tracks on it. And we and now we're getting into his more recent albums of that, like the ones I haven't got on vinyl. Which are very difficult to get on vinyl. Silly money you're paying really for them. So first one is Off the Ground. Do you quite like this album? Rock Boy recently went over this one here. So do check out his review because he does a great review of it. So this is what this one here, off the ground. We then have Flaming Pie here from 1997. Another very good album. Although a bit inconsistent, a bit. I mean, yeah, I've got some brilliant songs, but then some not so good ones like Really Love You, If You Wanna, and Used To Be Bad aren't that great. But other, otherwise, a brilliant album. We then have Red, um, not Red for Speed, Run Devil Run here. Um, yeah, so basically just like a collection of like loads of like rock and roll covers and stuff. And then um, Driving Rain or Thriving Pain as me and Mr. Mayo likes to refer to it as. It's, yeah, yeah, this is a pretty bad album, I must say. I mean, quite, quite like unmemorable and, and like, yeah, a bit boring. Too long as well, I think. I think they should have cut it down and got some, and they like, just chose the better tracks. Then got this one here, which is called, oh god, Back in the World here. But um, yeah, I've really, I've really not looked after this one. It's all, it's all just completely falling apart here. I mean, just sort of all, yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the pictures. It, I've, re I've really not looked after this one too well. Really good concert though that one like that was from two thousand two so he um 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 that's his voice still sounded brilliant then we then have um what's this one Chaos and Creation in the backyard quite like this album as well maybe a bit lacking in like the variety what I like in Paul albums but the songwriting on it though is brilliant I can't fault the songwriting though we then have. Memory Almost Full, another very good album. Now with this one here, there are basically most people are familiar with the cover like that there. But like if like, you have the CD, you can kind of fold over the edges and you get that picture of Paul there. So that's what I've done for some reason. And yeah, this was the first Paul album I think I actually got into properly, properly liking really. As as I explained in my Twenty Beatles questions um, video. And then we also have this one here, Live in Los Angeles. This one just came free with the Sunday paper. So not not too many songs on here. I mean, there's 12. And, like, yeah, he does songs, but he doesn't um, 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 do live very often. I mean, you've got Sea Moon and That Was Me, or, like, the two highlights on this one for me. That one's he doesn't do live very often. And then... And then yeah, it just gets to like be like the kind of predictable Beatles set. So hey, Jude, Lady Madonna, I saw her standing there. Back of the years, I saw those kind of songs all in there. Very loud album though. I mean, I mean like I mean like I mean like after that, like turn like my iPod down like when I'm listening to it. 
Then I have Good Evening New York City here. So this this is brilliant. Like, this is like really great value for money. I mean, I'm, I mean, I mean, I think it costs about ten pounds. You get two CDs, one of which you're listening to just now. If like you can hear it, just turn it up a bit. There's been Blackbird now, I think. If you, if like you can hear it, and like and they, and they also get a DVD with it as well, which is pretty good. Still, just too many like audience shots though. Really like in it. Well, I don't care what people think. I mean, I mean, I mean, like, I mean, I, I mean, I just want to see Paul. I don't care about old ladies crying because they're seeing Paul McCartney. It's like just no, just give me Paul in his band. Uh, we then have kisses on the bottom here. Um, this I'm here like I'm. Well, I'm not the biggest fan of, but this is the deluxe edition here with the postcards and stuff in it. You get. You get a few postcards in it. So, like, if I like ever um, um, review it, I'll show I'll show you the postcards what you get with it. But but I won't show you just now. Then we have uh, new here, his latest one here. Yeah, yes, yeah, still his latest one. Yeah. This is this is just a standard CD. Um, right, I'm still debating whether to get the collector's edition book book thing because I thought originally that it'd be. This size, but it's gonna actually be more like this size here. I'm afraid so. Um, but so like I might still get it. I mean, I mean, twenty pounds is pretty good, but um, but yeah, we'll see what happens. Um, so I hope you have enjoyed this video. It's been about thirty-five minutes long. So um, yes, yeah, quite long, but like my complete Paul McCartney collection. Um, um. Yeah, yeah, so I hope you have enjoyed it. Please leave a message below. Comment, um, well, that's leaving a message below. And, uh, um, subscribe if that's what I was looking for. And like the video. So I'll see you next time then. Bye-bye.